can't believe I might die like this. I always thought I'd go the way all dogs dream about. Slowly and at great inconvenience to my owners. Welcome to Movie List. And today we're counting down the top 20 times that Brian got what he deserved on Family Guy. You're supposed to be giving me emotional support right now. Let's just get to the bar. For this list, we're looking at times when the lovable white Labrador and trusted member of the Griffin family met his comeuppance in epic fashion. What's your favorite moment when Brian gets what he deserves? Let us know in the comments section below. Number 20. Banned from his favorite bar. Shut down the cat cafe! It's a nuisance and a threat to public health! When Quagmire decides that he wants to open a cat cafe, he chooses a location that happens to be near and dear to Brian's heart, right next door to his favorite bar. Hey! Shut up! Don't look at me! I'm dominant! Brian decides to take a stand, but it has some unintended consequences. When there's a citywide crackdown on animals inside restaurants, Brian finds himself on the losing end. Whoa, sorry. Can't let you win there. The city has said that no animals of any kind are allowed in any public establishment. Without a drink at his normal hangout, or anywhere else for that matter, Brian starts to feel a little on edge. Stupid law. Banning dogs. Kibbles and bits and bits and bits. Number 19. Getting rejected by a carny. When he hits it off with Amber, a carnival worker that he met at the fall festival, he's just as surprised as anyone. You like sex, huh? You, uh... Wouldn't maybe want to grab dinner sometime? Nah, but I'll bang it in the porta potty back by the very loud generators. Brian makes it clear to Stewie that he's only interested in Amber for one thing. And you can guess what that one thing is. I'm telling you, Stewie, this thing is all next level sex. It doesn't take long for Brian to conclude that he is way out of Amber's league, but when he tries to break up with her, he's shocked to discover that she's beat him to it. Brian, this here ain't working out. We need to break up. What? You're breaking up with me? Whoa, dumped by a Connie. Brutal. Number 18. Hearing the truth from his son. Among Brian's many faults, one of the worst is his failure to even attempt to have a relationship with his son, Dylan. Hey, Dad. I know we haven't talked in a while, but I'm calling because I'm on my way to Quahog. Oh, really? When, when are you getting here? Tuesday. Oh, don't say Tuesday. Oh, oh, I'm at the, I'm at the, I'm out at the project all day. Oh, hands-on, indispensable. They, they need me there, so, wow. But when Brian learns that his son is going to star on a new Disney Channel show, he suddenly changes his tune and talks Dylan into securing him a job on the show's writing staff. And, and you know what's weird? You're on a show, I'm a writer. It, it's almost like the universe is trying to, I don't know, make us work together or something. I don't know. Of course, Brian acts like the pompous buffoon that he is, immediately turning off everyone in the room. Hi, guys. Yes, I am that Brian Griffin. You probably have my novel, but just so you know, in here, I'm just one of the guys. After trying to push the envelope one too many times with his risque story ideas, he ends up getting himself fired in a fairly orderly fashion. Brian, you're fired. Wait, what? Sorry, Brian, but you're done. Uh, you can't fire a writer in the middle of a show. That'd be like a doctor leaving in the middle of a surgery. Number 17. Almost getting himself euthanized. When Brian and Jess tie the knot, he's worried that married life isn't for him. I can't take it, Peter. I thought I could marry Jess, but it's awful. I can't live this way. So Peter tries to convince him that married life isn't all that bad, and in fact, can be pretty great after all. You can finally let go. Just relax. Exhale for once. Exhale like you never have to attract a pretty woman ever again. <sighs> Wow, that feels amazing. But when marriage gets Brian a little too relaxed, a massive weight gain leads to a serious hip injury. Time for dinner, guys. Awesome, I'm starving. <laughs> when Brian's needs become too much for Jess to handle, instead of dropping him off for the hip replacement that he thinks he's getting, she actually tries to get him euthanized. Goodbye, Brian. You mean, see you soon, right? Wait, why won't I need my collar? Number 16, getting his teeth knocked out by Quagmire. After Peter becomes possessive of Brian's favorite rope toy, he takes him on a little joyride with it tied to his car, with disastrous consequences. My teeth! Oh, oh man, I'm real sorry about your mouth, Brian. This has to be the stupidest thing you've ever done. When Quagmire takes pity on the depressed and toothless Brian, he recommends a dentist that he happens to be on very friendly terms with. Look, listen, just here, just... Take this. That's my dentist. He'll bill me. I've got an account. You got an account with a dentist? He sells me nitrous at wholesale. I bang his wife. 
Using his new purpley whites to his advantage, Brian even confronts Quagmire at the gym to sell him on a condo. But when it turns out to be a dump, he tracks down the dog responsible. Welcome home. Ah, hey there, buddy. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. Quagmire knocks out Brian's teeth with a floor lamp. And as Brian goes home to the family with his tail between his legs, he admits that selling real estate is a bit harder than he thought. Yeah, it was a lot tougher than I thought. Oh yeah, it's real hard being a real estate agent. I mean, you gotta be able to count bathrooms. Number 15, getting his glasses smashed by Stewie. It's been well established that Brian tries very hard to sound smart, but when he starts wearing glasses to try and look the part as well, Stewie is having none of it. Still sticking with the glasses, huh? What? Oh, right, right, I have glasses. <laughs> They're such a part of me now, I, I forgot all about them. You're gross. When he is forced to watch Brian use his glasses as a prop to hit on a girl, he vows to destroy them once and for all. Boy, it's loud in here, huh? <laughs> when they said Professor Griffin, I, I barely heard them. That's it. I'm putting an end to this. I'm gonna destroy those glasses if it's the last thing I do. Stewie takes Brian for a spa day, enlisting Chris's help to break into his locker while they're in the sauna. But in typical Chris fashion, he screws it up, locking the three of them inside instead. Come on, Chris, don't let me down. Don't worry, Stewie. Chris, what are you doing in here? When all else fails, Stewie decides to take matters into his own hands in the most direct way possible. Hey, bruh? Yeah? <laughs> ah! Damn it! Ah! There's glass in my eye! Oh! Number 14, Flunking Meg's SAT Test. Are the SATs essential, vital, crucial? D, all of the above. I'll get the scissors and cut that poop off your bum. When Meg worries she won't pass her SAT test, she uses flattery to get her supposedly smart friend Brian to take it for her. Your book is genius, Brian. I can't believe Amazon is dumping it for 99 cents. What? My book is on Amazon? He successfully disguises himself as Meg and takes the test for her, but the results aren't exactly what either of them were hoping for. Brian, that's a thousand out of a possible 2,400. That's the worst score in my class. What? Damn it! Why did I ever think you were smart? Better luck next time, Brian. Although I don't think there's going to be a next time. Number 13. Getting kicked by a horse. One of Family Guy's longest running plot lines is Brian's feelings for Lois, but they cause serious problems when he misinterprets her romance novel as sincere romantic longings. Oh my god, this is amazing! This is basically a guide to what Lois is looking for in a lover. The book leads him into thinking Lois is having an affair with a man named Horatio. And while he gets to the bottom of it, it's not what he thinks. I'm not having an affair with him, Brian. I volunteered at the special needs living facility and Horatio happened to like horses, so once a week I take him to the stables. Brian was only concerned about Lois having an affair for his own selfish reasons, and after Lois lets him know it, it's Stewie's turn to dole out the punishment. I hope you can find it in your heart. Hey, Brian. <laughs> That's a good go. Number 12, getting hit by Quagmire's car. After Brian gets rejected for a date, Peter recommends he go to Quagmire's class on how to pick up women. But in the process, he hears a story about the one who got away. For me, that woman is Cheryl Teagues. You'd never fall for these tricks. That's why I keep trying to figure out how to bring you back into my life so we can make it work. And when Brian enacts his own gross pickup method right in front of Quagmire and ends up winning Cheryl's heart, it breaks his own. Well, it was great seeing you, Glenn. <laughs> but when Quagmire crashes Brian's date by showing up with his ex-girlfriend Jillian just to irritate him, things get a little heated. Well, I guess you guys have gotten pretty close, huh? Did Quagmire ever tell you he was obese as a child? Did Brian ever tell you he once had a tick on the back of his neck that he couldn't reach with his mouth and it swelled up to the size of a ping pong ball? When the two women leave the boys alone to work out their differences, they appear to patch things up. But when Brian asks Quagmire for a ride home and he appears to agree, he gets something else instead. Number 11, forced to move out because of a tweet. Type in tweet, blast off in three, two, one, and tweet it. When Brian gets obsessed with composing the perfect tweet and ends up going viral, he doesn't get the reaction he was hoping for. Hey, are you at Dog Backwards from Twitter? I am. Are, are you a fan? You racist jerk! I hope you get foot and mouth disease! Soon the whole Griffin family ends up in the public's crosshairs, with even poor Lois having to suffer for Brian's ill-thought-out tweet. Let me talk to Barbara. 
She doesn't want to talk to you either. Nobody does. Not as long as you're living with that racist dog. As a dog, Brian's always benefited from free room and board. But now that the Griffins have become pariahs in their own town, the gravy train is derailed. All I have left is you guys. Thank God you have my back. We think you should move out. What? Number 10. Stewie confronts Brian with all his old girlfriends. Brian's had a long list of girlfriends, but has never managed to find the one. The closest he came was with the fan favorite, Drew Barrymore voiced Jillian. Hi, Brian. Oh my God, who's your cute little friend? Oh my. In the season 11 episode, Valentine's Day in Quahog, Stewie rounds up all of Brian's old flames to get to the bottom of his troubles with women, but it doesn't exactly go according to plan. Oh my God. Stewie, what the hell? These are all my ex-girlfriends. Well, I thought they could provide some insights that might improve your love life. Instead of constructive criticism, the women list all the reasons Brian was a terrible and unfit partner. And needless to say, he does not take it well. Oh, oh you want honest? You're an old bag. You're blind. Your vomit tastes weird. You don't even know why you're here. After lashing out in the way only a cornered dog can, the women take their long-awaited revenge, with Stewie leading the charge. Get him! <laughs> Number 9. Ending up tailless. When Brian meets the attractive young Kate, he's immediately smitten. The famously superficial Labrador doesn't even have a problem with the fact that she's blind. You want to go outside, maybe a little quieter? Sure. Oh, my God, I... Uh... But it turns out that she does have a problem with him being a dog. God, I hate dogs. Y you do? Yeah. They're just slobbery, annoying, needy little bastards. I'm just not really a dog person, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, me neither. Dog people can get pretty annoying. Instead of coming clean, Brian uses Kate's disability against her in order to conceal the truth. But on a dinner with Kate's parents, a wagging tail nearly gives him away. It's your tail! Stop wagging your tail! I can't help it! Do something! All Brian had to do was be upfront with Kate about who he was, and maybe things would have turned out okay. Instead, he shot himself in the paw once again and ended up without a tail. Number 8. Sued Stupid When Brian learns his likeness has been used in a series of children's books, he's very upset. Even worse, the author is someone very near and dear to him. Lunky the Dumb White Dog? By Griffin Stewart? But when he sees he's been portrayed as far less intelligent than he thinks he is, Brian decides to take Stewie to court and sue him for defamation. You wrote a whole children's book series about me, and you made me look like a total idiot. Look, you gotta call the publisher and have these books recalled. Not a chance, Brian. All I'm doing is presenting you honestly to the public. But Brian is a dog, and when he's in court, there's times when he can't help but do doggy things. On December 1st, 1951, Treat Williams treat? was born. Where, where, where? Where's the treat? As smart as Brian seems to think he is, Stewie proves yet again that the family dog is no match for the baby's schemes. We have a verdict, Your Honor. Please proceed. The dog is an idiot. The baby wins. After! Number 7. Almost turned into a protein shake. When Stewie and Brian clean up on the stock market, they decide to invest in a protein shake company to keep the good times rolling. Yeah, it's a great company I found to invest in. Korean. They make protein shakes. But when they discover that the secret ingredient is dog, shockingly, Stewie is the only one who objects. Sorry, Stewie. Wall Street is a people-eat-dog world. Everyone knows that. Oh my god! Brian decides to go it alone and ends up nearly becoming the product instead of the investor. Hey, give me that phone! Stewie, it's Brian! You gotta help me, I'm gonna get eat- But thankfully, Stewie was able to use his Gymkata skills to save the day and Brian's hide. Come on, there's gotta be a way we can work this out. Rupert, music! Number 6. Made to look like an idiot by Peter. Oh, finally, another reader in the family. You know, these are some of my favorite books and authors. Oh, what are you reading right now? Oh, boy. Brian has gone to great lengths to make everyone think he's smarter than he actually is. But when Peter suddenly takes an interest in reading, his pseudo-intellectualism is exposed. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm sort of between books right now. Yeah? What was the last thing you read? He's got you on the ropes now. Brian starts trying every excuse in the proverbial book to get out of the corner he's backed himself into, all the while ignoring Stewie's words of advice. Well, I, I'm actually rereading a lot of stuff. Yeah? Like what? Just tap out. Of course, Brian can't help himself and ends up digging his hole even deeper before Stewie throws some dirt on it for him. Uh, the classics, you know? Going back to the, uh, 
basics, really. <laughs> right? <laughs> what is this, oak? Oh, I don't even think it's oak. Number five, breaking his leg in a marathon. When Brian meets a runner named Chloe at a coffee shop, he takes up the activity to try to impress her. What, what are you going? <sighs> and 1,000. Phew! But when he experienced a runner's high and gets hooked on exercise, his family starts getting annoyed. Wow, Brian, you sure have been doing a lot of jogging lately. <laughs> it's called running, Lois. Why don't you have some food? Oh, you mean fuel? <laughs> no, no offense, Lois, but that stuff is nothing but chemicals and empty calories. Brian takes his marathon training a little too far, and Stewie starts to get concerned that he isn't making healthy choices, but he brushes him off. Stewie, I know you're worried, all right? And no offense, but I'm not taking advice from a guy who eats bread. It turns out Stewie's concerns were well-founded, as Brian trips and breaks his leg as soon as the race begins. <laughs> ah! Ah! Number four, getting greedy. When Carter has to have eye surgery, Lois enlists Brian to become his service dog during his recovery. While Brian is at first less than enthusiastic about Carter's lavish lifestyle, You, you have a butler? Then the why am I here? Why can't he help you? What? That's stupid. Who would announce him? See, this right here, this is the one percenter crap I can't stand. He soon starts to think it's not that bad after all. Wow, so you could just bypass all that gridlock? Having a helicopter is amazing. And that's not all. I also use it to throw boxes of frogs down on that church. They go bananas. When the old man makes a full recovery and doesn't need Brian anymore, he has a hard time taking the news. Hey, that's terrific, Carter. Seems like it's time to go home and pour some of that scotch of yours to celebrate. That sounds like a great idea. See you later. Then he's met with some instant karma when his family calls him out on his new attitude. I'm sure this is a step down for you, Bri, but now you're back in the real world where our poop stinks and we all eat garbage. Yeah, I guess I got used to being a little pampered over at Carter's. Number three, having his Facebook hacked by Chris and Stewie. Stewie and Brian are about as close as siblings at this point, so when they both agree to be blood brothers, it only makes sense. Okay, your turn. I think we should hold hands more often. But it turns out that because of Brian's particular blood, Stewie is in for a rude awakening. What the hell? Ow! Ew, what's this? Ah! You son of a bitch, you gave me herpes! When Chris finds out that he too contracted the terrible disease from Brian, he teams up with Stewie to ruin Brian's date. Oh, hey, Brian. And who's your date? Wow, you must be such a good person to knowingly go out with a herpes riddled dirt bag. Ew! I'm sorry, Brian. I I've got to go. Not satisfied with ruining Brian's chances with yet another girl, Stewie and Chris hack his Facebook page to make everyone aware just what he's spreading. Stewie! Chris! Yes, Brian? You hacked my Facebook account. Number two. A quagmire at dinner. Brian is nothing if not insecure, so when he finds out that Quagmire doesn't like him, he has a seriously hard time coping. Do we get lost? What are you doing just standing out here? I'm waiting for Quagmire to get his mail. I'm gonna conveniently stroll by and strike up a conversation with him and maybe find out why he hates me. Oh, I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. You'll smooth it over. Brian takes him out to a fancy dinner to try to get into his good graces, but things are a little bit awkward right off the bat. Hey, what if I just drank this whole bottle of ketchup? <laughs> kind of ruins it for the next person who might want some ketchup. Instead of winning Quagmire over, he gets served up the brutal truth. Quagmire goes on an epic rant listing all of Brian's character faults, leaving him reeling. Okay, I'll tell you. You are the worst person I know. You constantly hit on your best friend's wife. The man pays for your food and rescued you from certain death, and this is how you repay him? It only gets worse from there, as Quagmire's rant gets even more personal, leading to some seriously harsh criticism. But you know what? I could forgive all of that, all of it, if you weren't such a bore. That's the worst of it, Brian. You're just a big, sad, alcoholic bore. I'll see you, Brian. Thanks for the steak. Number one, humiliated by Bill Maher. I think. I, I, actually, Dana, if I may, if I may, I have some insight on this. Uh, Bill, do you mind? Go, dog. <laughs> Brian writes a self-help book that becomes an instant bestseller. But when Stewie gets him booked on Bill Maher's talk show, he shows everyone how the success has already gone to his head. Why am I standing under an air vent? Um, because, because that's because where Because that's you... where I... But when Bill and the other guests decide they aren't having any of Brian's attitude or book, he gets a little hot under the collar. Well, you know, I mean, it does seem to be helping a lot of people, Bill. I mean, it... Well, help is a strong word. That is, before having a bit of an accident and being run out of the studio by an angry Bill in his rolled-up newspaper. 
Bill, he's urinating. Oh, That's it. Look, Bill, can I Outside. No, no, no. Outside. Outside now. Outside. <laughs> if you enjoyed this list, be sure to subscribe. Then click the video on screen to watch our latest. See you there.